Peggy 18. Dating all the way back to the very first Mortal Kombat, um, I actually worked in an arcade at the time. I remember coming into work and hearing the sound of people going, oh, ah, you know, making these loud screams and yells and cheers because they were seeing something they had never seen before. The reason fatalities appeal to so many people is, is these brutal, over-the-top things that, you know, most people never even want to think of doing to someone they know or even to, to um, someone that they don't know. Fatalities are awesome in that it's a perfect way to end a match. It's a good way to show that you dominated or your defeated opponent. It's a final punctuation mark that, okay, I just kicked your ass and now I'm gonna humiliate you even more. What makes the fatalities awesome, I think, is the sense of humor to them. Uh, and I know it, it took me a while to get my arms around the mentality of them myself. And it's, you know, they're very graphic and very disturbing and disgusting, but there's an underlying humor to them that, I, that you know, certainly is what defines my favorite ones. And, uh, and it was kind of what made them enjoyable to work on for me was, was, you know, finding that humor and kind of bringing that out, you know, graphically and visually. I think a lot of the casual players, you know, specifically pick up Mortal Kombat are always looking up, you know, what are the fatalities, um, how gruesome they are, you know, even finding out, like unlocking them through the game and stuff like that. And I really think, you know, this game around, I think we really took it to a whole new level. Initially, we, uh, you know, we try and come up with a, a brainstorming session, kind of get some ideas, or like think about stuff, and then we kind of all get together, me and the other designers, and go through, kind of bounce ideas off each other a little bit, and uh, kind of formulate one really great idea out of all of us. And from there, uh, we do a couple of practices, try to figure out the timing, things like that. We go in the studio, we shoot the actual motion. From there, we take the data, process it, get it into the computer, exaggerate it well beyond whatever we shot so that we get like this really great performance with all the gruesome, brutal things that people come to expect from Mortal Kombat. So once uh, all of the action had been defined, we would make sure that blood um, any of the magic, any of the, uh, you know, any of the other uh, visuals that don't fall under either environments or characters would get put into the cinemas. The most fun I had was actually the one fatality actually in particular was the, uh, the Kung Lao, you know, the, you know, one of the iconic ones that have been used in a lot of the, uh, the marketing now when he lays down his, uh, his hat and, you know, pulls the uh, unsuspecting victim through it. Carlos is, is, you know, he's a huge character in the studio and he likes to keep the, the mood upbeat. The Best part that I love about these fatalities is I get to beat up on Rick O'Mara, and he also gets to, you know, perform his fatalities on me. I actually remember when we were shooting the, um, the Cabal fatality where the victim falls on the hook swords, and you had Tony supporting Carlos as Carlos is falling over, and it was just hilarious because when you look at the raw data up on the screen, you don't see Tony there, so it just, he fell and it looked so perfect. It was hilarious. Maybe about like the third or fourth take, we start getting into more or less of the vision of the actual fatality. And it starts getting amped up with, you know, all that emotional content where you're getting into, you know, like, I really need to stab these knives into these guys' clavicle so that way the lightning will strike. You know, when you're doing it, the first or second time, you're like, oh, I really don't want to hurt, you know, the other actor. When the other actor gives you the cue, he's like, hey man, just let go and really like hit my clavs. Having somebody uh, able to draw off of that and Ed sitting there going, oh my God, that's what I want. I need that. And trying to draw off of that, all that emotional content and trying to get the best performance. My role on Fatalities was uh, to make sure that once everything else was in place that we had visual effects for the Fatalities. So once uh, all of the action had been defined, we would make sure that blood, any of the magic, any of the visuals that don't fall under either environments or characters would get put into the cinemas. Probably my favorite and most successful effects are the ones where we involve the most sleight of hand. The classic reptile fatality, getting his tongue to work, was one of those real coups. Now, that's the sort of thing that, you know, there's not a cut 
and dried system for doing. There were a lot of cheats and sleight of hands that we'd used to make that work. We use a, basically a beam, just a, an ability in the engine to draw uh, a mesh from one point to another, basically attaching one end to reptile's head and one end to the victim's head, and then introducing material-driven noise to that to make it seem as though there's an elastic tongue where, where really it's just a, you know, a code-driven mesh that's going from one point to another. Yeah, some of the key points that we really try to focus on is to make sure that every fatality fits into the same look and feel as the others. We don't want one or uh, another to kind of feel different. Each character had approximately 18 points of dismemberment. So you can imagine, you know, the technical hurdles we had to go through initially, working closely with the tech group to get a procedural tool inside of our tool to be able to like kind of, you know, do it on the fly. The effects guys had a major role in making the fatalities just look perfect. They uh, are masters of blood placement and um, all the effects that go with fatalities like you know, radiance, electricity, all the uh, blood decals that had to be put on to make uh, fatalities look nasty. You know, there's not just clean cuts anymore, there's bloody stumps wherever uh, there's a sever point. Every fatality had its own challenges, ranging from just making the blood look good and, and blood from the outset is a tricky thing to get right. Fluids and liquids are a difficult thing to do in particles and even more difficult to do in real time when we don't have the ability to render something, when we have to do a graphic that will update 60 times a second. And so even just the, the rudiments of getting the liquids to look good had its own challenges. One of the really cool things was at like E3 this year and a, lot of, a bunch of the other trade shows, um, we got to see some of the stuff that we thought of and came up with and we weren't sure how well it was gonna translate. I thought it was cool. But then, you know, during the demos, we did the first time we showed fatalities, we showed this trailer of a bunch of the fatalities together. And we had like people standing up and clapping for like moments of things that I came up with, like Sector's fatality, for instance. Like when all the missiles come out and like blow up all the body parts, people are just going nuts for that. A lot of people were cringing and I think that's kind of maybe when we started, or like going in the right direction here. Um, you know, taking some of the old stuff, you know, blending in with some uh, new ideas. And that's what I think, you know, is really cool about this little, uh, a little nod to the classics. The best fatalities are the ones that are nasty. They're like really violent, but at the same time have a comedic tone to it. Those are always the best ones. Most of them actually have a comedic tone to it, and I think that's what makes fatalities popular. Get over here!